Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Garmin announces their GTX 345 and GTX 335 all-in-one ADS-C transponders, a helicopter has a close encounter with a drone, a mid-air collision off the coast of California takes three lives. I'm Brie Cross, it's February 9th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Garmin has a game changer going as they announce their new GTX 345 and GTX 335 all-in-one ADS-B transponders that include extended squitter ADS-B out with options for built-in WAS as well as dual link ADS-B in. The GTX 345, 335 integrate on a wide variety of current and legacy Garmin displays including select G1000 integrated flight decks. Regardless of the existing avionics configuration, the GTX 345 unlocks more capabilities for pilots by displaying ADS-B traffic, weather 1, GPS position data, as well as backup attitude information on the Garmin Pilot and ForeFlight mobile app via Bluetooth and connects wireless technology. The GTX 345, 335 come in a size and form to make it easy to replace the most popular transponders in the industry. Garmin Solution provides the perks of a multi-capable transponder along with meeting the ADS-B out 2020 requirement and adding the advantage of ADS-B in capability. The GTX 345 and GTX 335 transponders have received the FAA's TSO authorization and is expected to receive an STC later this month for installation in hundreds of aircraft makes and models. European Aviation Safety Agency validation is expected later this year. As drones continue to be a concern for airspace safety, it's reported that last week that the crew of the Fresno County, California Sheriff's Office helicopter encountered a so-called dangerous situation. It's reported that while flying at an altitude of 550 feet, the pilot saw something in the sky resembling a bird. As he flew closer, it appeared to be a small airplane. The pilot then maneuvered out of its path and subsequently saw the object fly over the helicopter's rotor by about 20 feet. The crew determined that the flying object was a large drone and they located a person below with a remote control. They used the helicopter's loudspeaker to tell the operator to remain in place and land the drone. The helicopter landed nearby and, with the help of a ground-based deputy, questioned the operator. It's alleged the operator was flying at an altitude over 400 feet, not maintaining a clear distance from manned aircraft, and the drone was not FAA registered. The encounter was reported to the FAA even though the helo operator may have exacerbated the situation by flying closer to get a better look, something that might be called into question under FAR 91-113. After the break, California mid-air collision claims three lives. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. We are sorry to report that two general aviation aircraft collide off the coast of San Pedro, California last Friday afternoon in a crowded section of airspace in Southern California. Reports indicate that both aircraft had departed from Torrance Airport and that one of the aircraft was a Beechcraft Bonanza and the other a Super Decathlon. Reports say that the sole occupant of the Super Decathlon was Mary Falstrom, and this appears to have been confirmed by her husband in a news interview. The wreckage of an airplane and the remains of the two people on board were found in about 100 feet of water on Sunday. The Super Decathlon and its pilot were still missing as of Monday, and it's also been reported that one of the two occupants of the Bonanza was Martin Clement. The identity and remains of a second person have not been released. The search for the wreckage and remains continues, and the FAA and NTSB are investigating. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. On the second Saturday of every month, that would mean February 13th this month, the Western Antique Aeroplane and Automobile Museum, located at Jernstead Airfield in Hood River, Oregon, invites everyone to see a mixture of antique cars and airplanes. 
This museum has one of the largest collections of still flying antique airplanes and still driving antique automobiles in the country. February 16th brings us to the St. Louis Aviation Maintenance Symposium being held in Chesterfield, Missouri. A one-day program meets both the yearly training option for the renewal of inspection authority and aviation maintenance training to qualify for the FAA Aviation Maintenance Training Award. The exhibit hall allows vendors to display and discuss their products and services. Here's a big one. The Singapore Air Show 2016 runs from February 16th through the 21st this year. Every two years, high-level government and military delegations, as well as senior corporate executives around the world attend the Singapore Air Show. As Asia's largest air show, this is the place to be for leading aerospace companies and budding players eager to make their mark in the international aerospace and defense market. On February 19th, the International Women's Airspace Museum will host Dinner with a Slice of History, featuring a special presentation and book signing by Marion Dyson on her various careers as an author and former flight controller for NASA. Located on Burke Lakefront Airport in Cleveland, Ohio, the museum's collection includes all sorts of artifacts relating to the history of women in aviation and space. After these messages, the Secure Our Skies Act is endorsed by flight attendants. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Legislation that would fight human trafficking with proper training for aviation workers has been introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives. The Secure Our Skies Act has the backing of the Association of Flight Attendants Union. The F-35C Carrier Suitability Test Team deployed aboard the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower for developmental test phase two in October 2015. Trials with two F-35C test aircraft spanned nine days and completed all required test objectives and finished ahead of schedule. The Board of Directors of Delta Airlines has announced that Richard H. Anderson has chosen to retire as CEO effective May 2, 2016. At that time, Mr. Anderson will be elevated to Executive Chairman of the Delta Airlines Board of Directors. The first flight of NASA's new rocket, the Space Launch System, will carry 13 CubeSats to test innovative ideas along with an uncrewed Orion spacecraft in 2018. The 13 CubeSats will fly to deep space as secondary payloads. The American Society of Mechanical Engineers has designated Pratt & Whitney's R1340 WASP engine as a historic engineering landmark, recognizing its technical significance in engineering and aviation. It was the first engine designed and built by Pratt & Whitney after its founding in 1925. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Blue Origin, which has largely kept development of its rockets out of the media, has allowed a quick peek behind the curtain at the company's future plans. The company recently posted a photo on Twitter of an engine bell for its methane-fueled BE-4 rocket engine, which the company says is on track to support the first flight of ULA's Vulcan rocket in 2019. Meanwhile, GeekWire reports that Blue Origin's Brett Alexander, who recently attended an FAA conference on commercial spaceflight, referred to a couple of dozen test flights of the new Shepard booster over the next couple of years. He also said that the company's long-term goal is to move from suborbital to orbital launches with the booster being recovered. Blue Origin's schedule calls for unmanned suborbital flights to begin later this year, with the first three payload customers being Purdue University, the University of Central Florida, and Louisiana State University. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. 
Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.